And now we're moving into the realms of education. Now, over the past few weeks, we've seen the return of final year students at the various levels, um, you know, to their schools to complete their courses and prepare for their final exams. Now, government has come under a lot of scrutiny and backlash as a result of some decisions they've taken concerning these students. And uh, a lot of people are asking for these schools to be shut down, to have these students return home, because for them, they think that it is safer. We speak to some, we've been speaking to some government officials who say that, um, you know, the cases required recorded in some of these schools are just uh, an insignificant fraction and so as a result they don't see why they should base their decision to close the schools on what's happening in some of these schools. At this point we're crossing over to speak to Andrew Ofosut Denchi. He's an education technology program manager, World Vision Ghana and we want to find out from him what he thinks about the recent developments concerning the secondary schools. We do understand a number of them have recorded cases of COVID-19, over 20 of them. So what should be the decision? Let's cross over to him now as he joins us via Zoom. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us this morning and I hope you're well. Now, first of all, what do you think about the reopening of the schools? Did we rush with this decision? Um, let me say a very good morning to your team in viewers across Ghana. Um, I think the decision wasn't rushed. Um, okay. It was between um, the devil and the Red Sea. What do we have to do to support our children? In Kenya, Kenya has decided that they will re, uh, reset the academic year. So all children, if you did one semester, you are going to start the semester again. But it comes with a cost. Mm. And so I believe that our our decision is right and it was good we took that decision. It was a good decision to do that. But looking at the number of especially secondary schools that have recorded cases, the latest one being the Ag Bishop Porter Girls, it is one of seven schools in the Western region to have recorded, not to talk of the other schools across the country that have also recorded cases. Now, are we not jeopardizing the health and future of these students by leaving them in school when they could have been protected at home? Um, like you earlier said, the numbers speaks a lot. Mm. There are over 900 secondary schools, senior high schools across Ghana, and about the percentage of uh, schools that have got hit um, in terms of the number of children is not something that you can stand on and say that because of this, we have to shut down the schools. Besides, mm. the number of children that are contracted it is not as huge as we anticipate, but it's also even better for them to be um, identified, isolated and treated in school than if they were home. Because I can imagine the spike at home with these things spreading across the um, people in the house. They have people who are elderly, they would have been gotten hit and this would have hurt them so much. Mm. So I believe the school sets as a, a better ground if we put all the protocols together to be able to help uh, uh, treat these children and have them. But looking at the time frame, especially with the issue of the Archbishop Porter girls, it's very likely that they may have contracted, or that student may have contracted the virus whilst in school. I mean, let's talk about the Accra Girls Senior High School where we had six students contracting the virus, a teacher and a spouse as well. So the conversation has been that they've been in school for, this would be about the third or fourth week since the secondary school students returned to school to complete. So it's very likely that they may have contracted it in school, especially because there's a 14 day incubation period for the virus. And so if you're saying that, you know, it would have been better, it's better that they contracted in school whilst at home, maybe they would have been protected at home and wouldn't have to step out to interact with people. It's, it's interesting, um, especially with the Archbishop Porter one. Um, the virus cannot be determined now. We are still struggling to identify its, its, its nature and how it's transmitted. Mm. I am also surprised that having been in school for three weeks, they could get who brought it to the school because um, parents are not allowed to come to school. Yeah. The teachers are observing all the protocols and all that. Yesterday, I was in Central Region and I paid a visit to drive through a couple of schools and I realized that they were all the kids have no smarts and all that. So I, it baffles me. Mm. But again, um, we need to ensure that the children are observing all these protocols. Mm. 
and the number of children who have got hit is not so huge that can say that we, we close all schools. I stand to be corrected anyway, but I still feel that we, it's early days yet. Um, once they, when they were going, the government said that they have attached health persons and hospitals to each of these schools. So if the monitoring continues and the mass testing continues for the children, I believe that they will, they will be able to stand the test of time. You think there should be mass testing for the students, for all students? Um, in, especially in the schools that have had uh, uh, contracted the disease. But they've done contact tracing in some of these schools. Is that not enough? Um, yes, it, it should be enough, but if, if they could continue to do the mass testing. In fact, if you take up Bishop Porter girls, for example, the number of final year students there are less about 400 plus uh, the gold track, mm -hmm. which is just a few. So if you are doing mass testing for all these 800 or so children, it shouldn't be a bother. At least it will help you to identify those who are asymptomatic and have not showed signs yet. And so that that can be also taken care of. You know, they are writing, they start the paper in, uh, next week, 20th. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And so the children need a peace of mind to start read and, and, and write the exams. So for me, I believe mass testing of those schools that have got hit should be a priority now. But there's no likelihood that we're going to get the results even before they start their exams, looking at the date set for the WASI, especially because we understand there's a lag in some of the results that come out. Uh, the last biggest number of uh, you know, results that we had, they were from sometime June 16th up until um, now. And so if we're saying that we should test these students, what if they don't get their results before they start the exams? How are they still going to get their peace of mind? That is where the problem is. I believe that the government has to be up and doing there are a lot of parents who are anguished. They are worried because their children are left there all by themselves. And they don't know what the government is actually doing. So I think the government should prioritize the testing of these children. And in the Western region, there's one testing site there. It has to be reactivated. Sometime back, um, a few weeks ago, they stopped testing. They could reactivate these uh, centers so that the children could be tested because other than that, then we don't need to keep them there. But my worry is that if we send them home now and they have not been tested, the possibility of them spreading it across their homes will be just enormous. Mm. So I feel strongly that they need to be tested, kept in school, at least for now, when we think that the situation has been assuaged. Once has been assuaged, then if we, they can continue the academic work. Um, but um, my worry is that the information flow on these schools that have got hit is very little. We, we are not hearing anything in mm. terms of measures that are been taken to uh, ameliorate the problem. I believe the Ministry of Education and the Ghana Health Service and the Management Committee of the COVID should be providing parents a lot of information because at this stage, I can imagine how parents are feeling at home when your, your, your child is in school and you are hearing such kind of reports. Okay. Now, what do you also think about the placement of uh, polling centers in the secondary schools to enable some of these students who are eligible um, to register for the voters' ID? That has also come under a lot of scrutiny. Just this weekend, uh, there was a conversation about one of the NPP um, you know, executives going there to speak to the students, uh, possibly campaigning. Uh, we also saw some photos of some NDC executives in some other schools. There was one that actually said he even visited the dormitories of the students, and this was just for him um, to interact with the students and also uh, monitor proceedings in the various polling stations. Do you think that at this point, that's what we actually needed, especially when we're preparing students for exams and maybe they should be focusing on writing exams and not registering? Um, you gave me two things. One is the registration. The registration has its own protocols, which does not hurt the children in any way. Um, I have seen photos of children who were registering and they observed the uh, social distance protocols, hand washing, face masks, and all that. That was okay. What I am not so comfortable with is the campaigning of people who visited children in the classrooms mm. or in the dormitories. Whatever headmaster who allowed these people to do that should be punished. In fact, before they left, 
parents were assured and the like general public were assured that parents shouldn't visit children at school. Mm. The reason is simple, not to bring any contamination from home to school so that these children can stay in school without the COVID. But if you allow these politicians to get in there, I'm afraid the possibility of maybe a child may handshake some one of them or just take a shot or a photo or something, this can really transmit the disease across. So it, it, it wasn't right and it, it, should, it should be condemned. It should be condemned. Okay, well, my time is up, but thank you so much for speaking to us. Andrew Ofosudechi is an education technology program manager at World Vision Ghana. Thank you very much.